Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech. And now that Apple has released iOS 18 to the public and many people are getting used to the overall settings and changes, there's some important settings you should know. So I thought we'd go over 18 important settings to know along with some tips and tricks. Now, the first thing is the new control center. Some people really love it. They love the customization. Some people really don't like it at all. They want it to look more like the older control center. Well, you can actually fully customize this and get rid of all these extra pages press and hold. And once you scroll down, you can just delete anything you want here. So delete all of these different pages, get rid of them entirely, delete any widgets you don't want, and then you'll be back to just one page. So when you go into your control center, now you're back to one page. And if you want it to look just like iOS 17, you can customize it that way as well. Unfortunately, you can't get rid of this sort of overview where it goes into the connectivity menu. But other than that, you can change it to whatever you'd like, sort of like you could before with the control center options, but just pick what you'd like to see here on a singular page. Now with iOS 18, one of the biggest changes and one of the most controversial changes has to do with the photos app. Apple completely redesigned it and some people really don't like it. On iOS 17, it was pretty simple. You had library for you albums and search. Well, in iOS 18, I wanted to help you get it as close as you can to what you had before. If you prefer just a simple photo library. Now we can't modify where selector search is, but those are pretty much the same search is now in the upper right, but everything else we can change. So if you want your album to look like this, go into customize and reorder, and then just deselect every single thing except for pinned collections. The reason for this is pinned collections can be modified on its own. So once that's selected and everything else is unselected, and of course you can customize this however you want, go into your pinned collections, then tap modify. Now I currently have recently saved videos, screenshots, hidden, recently deleted and imports. But if you want to add any one of these, you can, and you can also add any collection or album. So if you go in collection or album, you'll see different options here where you could select people and pets, albums, suggestions, and more. And then at the bottom is your different utilities. So you can add this directly to your album and go back from your collections into your pinned collections. So once you have that selected, you can also reorder them just by dragging and dropping. Then you can get it very simple like this. You could completely get rid of pinned collections as well. If you want to just keep in mind, it will be more difficult to go into things such as utilities or anything else. With the introduction of iOS 18, Apple finally added RCS messaging to the messages app. However, this may not be available in all areas just yet, or it may be turned on very soon. Apple's enabled it in the United States, many other countries, and it's also carrier dependent. China is coming soon as well, but in order to use it, you need to enable it. Now, what it allows is for higher quality images and photos. It allows to see what someone else is or when someone else is typing. So when you start to type, you'll see on a pixel nine pro XL, you'll see here that it shows typing. Or if I type back, it will show that in return. You can have read or read receipts and many other functions with group messaging that make it much easier to use. In order to enable that, go into your settings, scroll down to your apps within your apps, go down to messages. And if you scroll down in your messaging options, you'll see RCS messaging, go into RCS messaging and just make sure it's enabled. Once it is, once you go into settings and you're messaging someone that actually has RCS enabled, or they're on an Android phone using RCS, you'll actually see it here where it says RCS. Also back in settings, I would recommend actually enabling or disabling a specific option, depending on your overall data usage. So you'll see, we have low quality image mode. Apple actually enhanced this for iOS 18, making it much better, much less sort of pixelated pictures, higher quality. And it says when this is on images sent will be lower quality. If you have a data cap where you live, you may want to enable this as it will send lower quality images. You can always turn this back off and then send a higher quality image as well. In settings, if we go down to camera, there's a couple things I would recommend checking out and enabling based on your preferences here. Under the camera settings, you'll see a couple different things. The first thing is record sound. If we go into record sound, there's a new option for allow audio playback. Once you enable this, you can now record video on your phone using your camera while music is playing. So maybe you've got a song playing. Let me turn this down here. We'll go ahead and press play. If that's playing here, we go into our camera within our camera. If we go to video, we can then continue to play the song while we play video or when we're recording video. So while you have that active, you'll be able to use that. So if that's something you want to do, 
and maybe you're recording videos online or something else and you want music as a background and you have some royalty free music, then you can keep that enabled or disabled based on your preferences. The other thing I would recommend checking out is Apple updated preserve settings. They've added things such as the controls menu here this time around. I would recommend enabling these based on your overall usage, but the controls menu is something I use regularly and back within the camera, the little option here at the top, this is our menu and you'll see it preserves settings. I was last in the ProRes settings. Maybe I'll switch over to the exposure settings, go back out, go back in go to my controls menu. I'm immediately right back into controls. This can help when maybe you want to switch something quickly or you just adjust this all the time. Also within your camera settings, if you go under formats, I would recommend scrolling down and enabling or disabling Apple ProRes, depending on what you plan to use. Apple ProRes is a nice format. If you're going to maybe adjust your footage afterwards, record in log, or you just want the highest quality available. However, it takes up a tremendous amount of storage. So I would recommend turning that off if you've never planned to use it. You can leave it on, go into your camera settings, go under video, and then tap the setting here as well to turn it off if you don't want ProRes and you want to save some sort of file space. But if you never want to use it, I would recommend turning this off or leaving it on depending on what you use. Sometimes I use it, so I leave it turned on. Now within iOS 18, there's a really great option where you can share your screen and there's some options you may want to customize based on this. So first let me show you the feature. Now on my iPhone 15 pro max, I'm actually viewing the screen of the iPhone 11 through a FaceTime call where they've shared their screen. If I want to maybe let them know that they need to go into settings, I can circle it here and it shows in real time over here. I can even take control of their display and maybe move it around. And under notifications, if you're not using maybe a focus mode while you're actually using screen sharing, you can go into your notifications, go to screen sharing, and then disable this. This will stop notifications during share play or screen mirroring, as well as when you're sharing. So that's something I would recommend that you turn off if you're screen sharing with someone you don't want to see your notifications. Now back in our settings, if we tap on our name at the top, then we go into subscriptions. Within subscriptions, we'll wait for it to load. And within subscriptions, you'll see I have discovery plus it's $8.99 per month. If we go into this, not only can we cancel the subscription, but you can now go to see all plans and switch between the plans. I'd recommend checking this out just to make sure that you're within the range that you can spend per month and switch it to whatever works best for you. Now with iOS 18, there's some new battery settings to talk about. Now I wanted to mention a few, but not a ton of them as there's many more to consider, but maybe I'll cover that in a separate video, but I did want to share a few. So if we go into settings, we go to battery on supported devices devices, you'll actually have a charging option. Under charging, we now have a charge limit. Now we've got a bunch of different options from 80 to 100%, and you may want to adjust this based on how you use your phone. I personally use optimized battery charging as I typically don't get through a day. I test a lot of betas, but if you want to optimize your overall battery health, you may want to change this maybe to 80%. If you get through the day with 50% of your battery life left, 80% would work fine. Then you could change it later on, or maybe you need that 90% or hundred percent. You can of course set that and then set it to 100 and use optimized battery charging. Adjust that to whatever works best for you. In addition to that, more and more people are seeing crowded 5G networks. 5G uses a lot of power. They really haven't improved the modems a ton yet. And 5G, you may want to switch some settings here. So again, in your settings, go under cellular and within your cellular data options, go under voice and data. And you of course can leave it on 5G auto. Now, if you want 5G and you have good coverage, I would recommend turning off 5G standalone as you don't really need to use 5G all the time unless it's available everywhere with a very strong signal. Unless you need the highest data rates. However, in many cases, now 5G networks are so crowded, LTE may work better for you. If you find that you have very little 5G signal, you may want to switch to LTE. And since those networks aren't as crowded lately, maybe you'll get faster speeds, but you'll definitely save a lot of power. I typically leave it on auto and leaves 5G standalone off as it seems to use a lot more power. So that's typically how I use it as I have good 5G coverage here, but LTE will definitely save you more power as it just seems to be more power efficient. Now, many of us that buy iPhones are concerned about privacy and security. There's a few recommendations and some great new features along with iOS 18 that go along with this. So first I would recommend going into your settings go into Wi-Fi, then tap the I next to your Wi-Fi that you're connected to. Now under this option, you'll see private Wi-Fi address. This is a new option that allows us to rotate our Wi-Fi address. So it's harder to track our device. 
go into private Wi-Fi address, then switch it to either fixed or rotating. Rotating will change this every so often so that it's harder to track your specific device across networks. Back within settings, if I scroll down to privacy and security, we now have an option for contacts. Under contacts, we now can see our contacts at the top, but we also can see apps that are requesting access to contacts. And you'll see I have them either turned off to none or full access for WhatsApp since I'm messaging people back and forth, or in others, Snapchat, it says none, Google Maps doesn't need that, Tesla doesn't need that, but if I want to limit that, I can go into the app options here, and you'll see limited access is one contact, or I can give full access. If I go to limited access, it then has me actually select specific people, we can edit that, select different contacts, and then add that just based on whoever we want to have access within that app. So that's something I would recommend taking some time to go through and change based on your preferences. And we have a similar feature when it comes to photos. If we scroll down to photos in our privacy and security menu, under privacy and security, we have full photo library access for different apps asking the same thing. For example, you'll see similar ones. TikTok, for example, we'll switch it to none. The same is true maybe with Instagram where we can limit this. Whatever we select, we can of course choose based on our preference for that specific app. So. YouTube, TikTok, Threads, any of those we can limit completely based on our own preferences. Back under the main privacy and security menu, I would recommend going into tracking and within tracking, just to save yourself some time, you may want to disable allow apps to request to track. Now, typically when you install a new app, if it wants to track and maybe see what other apps are doing, it will ask you the first time you open the app. If you just want to avoid that entirely, turn this off and it will no longer ask. You'll see I have it turned off on everything. My apps don't need to know what my other apps are doing. So I would personally recommend turning it off, but if you want that enabled, of course you can leave it on. The same is true with a couple other things within your privacy and security settings. For example, analytics. If we scroll down here, we go down to the bottom, we have analytics and improvements. I typically turn these off for everything unless I'm trying to maybe test something, but in general, I don't want to share this information. At least I personally don't want to share it with Apple. You of course can do that if you want to improve fitness, improve Siri and dictation, but basically every so often it will offload that information anonymously to Apple. So it's not necessarily a privacy risk per se, but it is giving information about general usage. The same is true with advertising. So you'll see just under analytics and improvements, there's Apple advertising. I have these turned off for personalized ads. Now, if you want this enabled and you enjoy personalized ads, then by all means, turn it on, but it, turning it off, it says turning off personalized ads will limit Apple's ability to deliver relevant ads to you, but will not reduce the number of ads you receive. So they won't necessarily be targeted based on what you're actually viewing. So I just leave it off. I don't really want that personally. And then within this same menu, just below it, I would recommend enabling stolen device protection. This is something that's a new feature that makes it much more difficult to sort of get into your device. It adds a layer of security to your, to your iPhone in the event that it's stolen or someone knows your passcode. So I would recommend enabling that. And then you can select whatever you'd like, have it enabled and always have a security delay or when you're away from familiar locations. And then finally, within the same menu, just below Apple advertising, I would recommend going into app privacy report. Now this may be something you're not as interested in, or you may be, but basically if you enable it, it will show how often apps use the permission you've granted to access your data, such as your location or microphone. You'll see it also includes a breakdown of each app's network activity, website network activity, and the most frequently contacted domains. So if it's trying to communicate, you can enable that and then check back here for that report. Now iOS 18 contains many new features and changes, some niceties with customization, other things I've mentioned in different videos with a full overview of iOS 18. But there's a lot more to get into here, but these are just 18 important settings you should know. If there's anything else you would recommend, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.